are live. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Let's Practice Today Beethoven Moonlight Sonata, the piece everyone loves, and for a good reason. It's really, really beautiful. So we're going to look at the first movement today. Uh, possibly we'll look at the second and third movement. I think the third movement is also very, very popular. A lot of people love that. So everyone knows the first movement. look at this uh, we'll talk a little bit about you know the style and just really how I think I think what we'll talk a bit about is how to get into the depth of it because it's a very deep piece really and uh, I would like to play it for you as well so Beethoven uh, just wrote this piece and wrote sonata in the manner of a fantasy not a moonlight sonata moonlight is it's just a word that we've put on, on top of it to, you know, characterize the piece a little bit. But it's not that Beethoven was thinking about Moonlight when he wrote this sonata. It was more of a fantasia, a sonata in the manner of a fantasia. Yeah, it's very it's a very deep kind of piece, right? So post in your questions in the comments so we can look at that. That'll be great. Just going to get this all set up. And without further ado, uh, hi, everyone who's joined the stream. Hi, Victor, Martina, Timothy, uh, Brazil, Texas. Nice. Awesome. So uh, today I'm definitely going to just go ahead and play this for you, and then we will talk about it. So here we go. Without further ado, the first movement, a very famous first movement of the Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven. Thank you. 
something that happens when you live stream and don't prepare something so well. Hi from Montreal. Nice. Hi, Elizabeth, Victor, Graham. Uh, yeah, I suppose this is a little somber piece for a Canadian Thanksgiving. It is Canadian Thanksgiving today. So there we have it. Okay, let's get into this. So, you know, right off the bat, one thing I would really recommend and suggest anyone playing this piece or any Beethoven, really, or anyone who just loves Beethoven is check out the BBC documentary called The Genius of Beethoven. I think it's in three parts with a, maybe a two hours per part or something like that. It's rather long, but it's really worth checking out. And uh, I think just, you know, remembering some of it now, it really helps you get into Beethoven's world a little bit and and understand a bit of his character and the kind of music he writes and the profound nature of this kind of thing. So we'll just love the C-sharp minor. And then the bass goes down to a B natural. Already, the second chord is pretty special. And then A major. And this is... We have a lot of that Napolitan sixth year, which is the second degree lower on a major chord. So if we're in C major, the second degree would be D minor. Uh, and then we lower that, we flatten it, so D flat major. That's what we have. So in this case, C sharp minor, and then our Napolitan is going to be D major Underestimate the, the profound nature of it. So maybe that was a little bit on the slow side, but uh, I think that's the best thing you can do is really like, you know, read up on Beethoven a little bit. You know, watch that documentary, it's really good. I think it gives you a bit of an a bit of an idea of you know the character of this guy, uh, and that helps you understand his music better. Best documentary ever. Yes, I'm happy you've seen that. Uh, not many people have, so that's really, really good. Um, da -da -da. Beethoven rules, yes, he's godly, absolutely. <laughs> Pathétique, first movement, great, that's awesome, Victor. We're, I think I've done a few videos on that, but uh, we will definitely live stream that one. Don't know if it's in the schedule yet, we'll definitely add it up. Hi, Martina. Piano man, hi from Rome, awesome. One of my uh, uh, favorite uh, pianists uh, lives and teaches from Rome, Benedetto Lupo. It's really amazing. One of the, one of the most amazing teachers I've ever uh, encountered. Absolutely. Best documentary ever. That's awesome. Good. Happy uh, someone has seen that. Uh, the actors are really bad, but uh, the pianist actually who narrates and plays music is fantastic. So that's really cool. So all right. You know what? Uh, what can we look at this? We have the Napolitan. Let's take it a little faster. I think I might have. It's, it's nice, nice if once this melody comes here, it, if it's, it's a, a different, different kind of sound, sound than everything we've had before. So I think it didn't help myself playing this so, so, uh, so uh, slow. It's really actually hard to control. When you want a, a sotto voce here, nothing too expressive, so that when that melody comes out, we have really a different kind of sound. Let's see how this works. I haven't had that sound yet. That's it. Yeah, that documentary is on YouTube. So, okay, you know, now this is a little over the tempo, right? So you can experiment a little bit, see what's too slow, what's too fast. Absolutely. I like doing that. A little more of the A. And back down to G sharp. And now we're in major. E major. It's like there's a little bit of hope in some moments here. 
and then the G sharp flattens down the third to a natural E minor. But we're still going to a major theme. C major. expect to do this today, but the C major is kind of a Neapolitan. It has a Neapolitan relationship again to B minor, right? Without the sixth, of course, we're not on an inversion, but C major, here's a five, the dominant of B minor. So this is kind of, again, that Neapolitan. That's really wonderful. Another thing you can pay attention to in here is sometimes the middle note in the triplets and right hand is important, right? So, like for example, right here, third bar, and now we have the D, and now we have B sharp, C, C sharp, C sharp again, and then the seventh gear. Places like that where it's changing from notes. After here, it's the same. Now it's not important, right? All right, so just love that harmonic transition here. E minor, we go to C major, which is like an apolitan of B minor. A little bit more on this one. The G in the bass is also important here. This one. Yes. B minor now. Okay, so we have issues here with uh, ninths a lot, right? Which are too big for some, some hands, right? The first one we have was... do it in one shot then you're lucky a lot of people can't if not and whether you can or not you can switch here to thumb thumb two right if not you have to do something like this that's okay right then we have this here of Beethoven is this kind of serious things. And again, the major seventh here. Bumps that Beethoven does. Okay. Now, in all that, you see there's a little swell, a, a crescendo, decrescendo. We also call that a hairpin because it looks like a hairpin. So, we want to bring that out in both hands. So, that A sharp should resolve less B than the A sharp. So you have the C natural, more on this one, less on this one. Then in the left hand, you have these octaves, right? So you have more on the G and back down to E and B. So here's the secret with these octaves. Here's the secret here, I'm gonna move that. If you can do this, 
one five, change the thumb, let go of the five, change the thumb for a two. Back to one five, and then probably here you can do one four, change the four for a three. So you're holding this with three. That changes really the way you play it. Now you're playing it almost the way you would play single notes instead of octaves. Ta you have the tension in your in your hand. So E G E switch for the three. That's the kind of thing. You know, you can even do change the five for a four if you want. Trying not to go too crazy here. But if you want to do at least some of this, at least change the thumb for a two here. That lets you do that sort of thing. That you have to otherwise release if you're playing just octaves with one five. See how that adds an extra tension in that. That's really useful. All right. <clears throat> so it got take, taken down from YouTube. That's that's really sad. Is that true? I mean, it, it was recently up there, so I'm sure you can find it somewhere. B, it was BBC documentary. Oh, you can only find part three. That's too bad. I really hope uh, hope it's available somewhere because it's it's really uh, I think it's really worth watching, even despite the mediocre acting in there. This is really special again. This, every chord is special here. Here we have our Napolitan again. So we're going to F sharp minor here, right? time also to uh, play solid chords. Don't always play them broken the way they're written. When you're just trying to understand a little bit the chords and the harmony. That really helps that sort of thing to understand that harmony. All right. God, I just love that. So thing I feel I should mention in here which is kind of tricky is how about you know rubato and taking time and showing the phrases and of course trying to bring out the structure what do we do with that in this piece you know it's not very most of the rubato that we would do here is quite inappropriate because it's it's really mechanical you know or let's say ecological it's like one of these you know uh, wind uh, turbines you know that's just it's just going and it doesn't stop or move around so easily, you know, but there's also something about that that's that's very pure. So try to take time as sparingly as you can in this piece. Having said that, I think there's some places where you can just back off a little bit, a tiny little bit, you know, for example, right there, you know, when we get to F sharp minor, perhaps, right? So here you can back off a little. Very subtle, right? So it's not like we're slowing down a lot. Another thing to watch out for here, I think, would be doing stuff like this is bar four. Stuff like that. You know, or like that. Or here. Taking time. disrupting that remember that wind turbine think about that wind turbine you know it doesn't exactly like stop and then keep going and this is kind of like that these triplets are your wind turbine you can slow them down a little tiny bit like something just 
just a little bit, but we don't want to do... We don't want to do that sort of thing. Maybe in like one place in the whole piece, right? And again, a strategical place, right? Put that check back in. All right, I hope the bit rate is good, guys. We have a little... Uh, YouTube tells me it's not so good. So, all right, here we go. Let's go on. We're in F sharp minor now. Crescendo here. But it's just a small crescendo, right? So, and then back down here. Here's a place where we did not have the Napolitan, right? He could have written... already done that many times and he'll do it again later so we have a D sharp now use the wheel so that helps bring the the notes the quarter notes the melodic notes it helps bring them out because you you end up playing them in the front with the wheel right so this wrist goes down and this forwards in the front and here then again same thing here now this part is very spooky Let me know how that connection is, guys. I think we might have had a little uh, a low bit right there, so just give me a little feedback. That's cool. Not that there's anything I can do about it, but now we have D sharp, C sharp, the second time, right? Because we had D sharp, C, and then again E sharp, C sharp, E sharp, now D natural. And, and necessitates a little something special there. Maybe you take a little bit of time or find a different sound. I think timing is, is appropriate here. That's definitely a place you take a little bit of time in here, right? We were back, we came back to C sharp minor. So, and a sixth degree here, A major. And in this, um, this is the Budapest Cortex edition. And uh, there's an F here, an F sharp. I don't think that's in any other edition. to pianissimo just like the beginning this is just like the beginning same key a little more on the A back down to here or sustain now instead of going to E minor Places Beethoven has pianissimo long ago, then a crescendo followed by a piano. Is it crescendo up from pianissimo to a piano volume? 
Or is he doing this thing he does all the time where we crescendo and then abort the crescendo? Could be. Here's our Napolitan again. We stay in C sharp minor. Same thing here. Same fingering for the left hand, but change that thumb for a two when you do these octaves so you can connect inside the hand. That's really good. Alright, then here's a kind of special place in the piece. Never had this before. A little circle of fifths. Here's another place we have crescendo followed by piano. So again, does the crescendo followed by piano go together? Or is it, you know, as we said before, moving up from pianissimo? We didn't have pianissimo before now. So it looks like it's probably something like this. Looks like it's going somewhere, but it isn't. Now in the left hand, of course, bring out those G sharps. guys probably low bit rate stream today uh, if it's still running just let me know it looks a little chaotic uh, if it's if it's a total disaster we'll redo this one uh, otherwise Friday we have the Chopin a minor waltz not the super popular one but the slow one And otherwise, I think we've covered it, you know, we I didn't go into fingerings too much or things like that. You know, of course, we could look at this a little bit. You know, one, three, two, five, one, two, one, three, two, four, three, five. That's very good. One, four, two, five, one, three, two, five, two, five, four, two, one, three, two, five, 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 three, one, two, five. It's not a bad fingering. You can check that out. Hi, Johan. Uh, and here we go. I believe that ends it for today, unless uh, you have any last minute questions. I do apologize. Sometimes I close the stream and see there was some question there that I didn't see. Sometimes I can try to convince myself like it magically appeared and I didn't see it. But hi, Wei Ling Chong. Thank you. I just discovered your channel and loving your stuff. Glad you're loving it. Uh, sound is good. Video not bad at all. A little blurry at times. Okay, that's not too bad. All right. Hopefully it went okay. So that's it, guys. Check out the schedule for the live streams in the description. The schedule is always there. There's a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, we have Chopin Waltz in A minor, a Scriabin Etude. Okay, that's uh, also Beethoven. Uh, did I say Chopin Waltz in A minor? Okay, yeah, both waltzes in A minor. We have both of them. Also, we will be looking at uh, Beethoven Piano Sonata number 30 this month. Uh, hopefully a Scriabin Etude as well. Lots of stuff. Send in your suggestions as well. You can leave that in chat or in the comments. Uh, always love to be reminded of great pieces we should look at that aren't on that list. 
Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Uh, go ahead and practice the piece. That's awesome. Uh, see you next Friday. Peace over.